I'm supposed to be learning. It should be a Tennessee. Yeah, I'm not learning. Unfortunately, I'm not going to feel muscle. So, I'm going to start some uh, chesim at days right after the mission. The Mishnah said that the Kayin Gadol is able to read from the Torah. He can read in um, wearing his own personal robe, or he can wear big day boots, which is the white clothing, the linen clothes. So Midiktani bits the Slavon Mishalai. And the fact that the Mishnah says that he could read wearing his own clothing, right? So that's a proof. Obviously, reading the Torah is not one of the services of the day. Right? You with me? And you keep it. Why? Because if he doesn't have to wear the, the special clothing, then it must be that it's not a service. Now, there's a problem, though. I'm sorry? That's what it is. Okay. But Katani, but it also says, that if he wants, he can, re- he can wear the the clothing of linen, which are the holy clothing. That's the ones that he wears to the Kitsha Kadashim. This is telling me that you're allowed to have personal benefit from the Big Day Kuna. Right? Why? Because I'm not doing an Aveda. How do I know it's not an Aveda? Because I'm allowed to wear my own clothes. I'm not doing, uh, and and I'm also at the same time I'm allowed to wear, um, I'm allowed to wear big day boots, the linen clothes. It means I can have personal benefit. Yes, I can wear those clothing for things that aren't avoided. Kumar says, well, Vilma Shani created the tzarech Maybe it's tzarech So it's necessary for the avoider. So you're allowed to wear it for that moment. Why is it necessary for the avoider? Um, Maybe, maybe because I need, it's a section of the service that I need to do this until before I do it, the next part of the service. I need to, I need to do. Well, it's not just yeah, it's a, like a preparation, but it's it's the the next part of the service is dependent on that I did the kriya already. So in order to get the next part of the service going, I have to do the kriya. So therefore, it's terrible. The Bailan, because we actually had a question, we're going to prove that this is a possible answer. Sayra Chavayda. We had a question. Big Dikuna Nitna Lehanispam, Malay Nitna Lehanispam. You're allowed to have benefits from the Big Dikuna or, or not. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that's that's that was the question. Is it considered meila? Um, is it considered meila? Or are you allowed to use it for personal? Or, like, how was it consecrated? What type of consecration did the, did the garments have? So we had had this question: Are you allowed to have benefits from the clothing? Like, use it for personal use? You know, the doctors uh, they go home, they wear the scrubs and everything. No, so yeah, it's like easy clothing. They just put it on. They're allowed to use it for other things. Um, so what about the kainim? Well, it says like this: Tashima, loya yeshenu big de kaidesh. They're not supposed to sleep in the holy clothing. Shino who the loy, a michalachli. See, they're not supposed to sleep in it, but they're allowed to eat their lunch in the clothing. That means they they are allowed to wear it for things that aren't the service. Now, by the way, what's their lunch? Probably a carbon. Right. So the Gemara says, "Well, they're actually they're eating. They're not eating tuna fish. They're eating steak and uh, right and um, and matzahs, <laughs> steaks and matzahs. Right. So um, so that's tzerech havayda. You see, we have an we have an answer. We've asked this question before, and we've given this answer." I mean, it's Tzarech Avaida. What's necessary for the Avaida is acceptable, even though it's not um, an Avaida itself. Kiddetanya, as it's taught in a price, the Baruch Loi Samashikopabam, they will eat those that were atoned, or that atones for them. The Kainim eat, and through the Kainim eating, the owners receive their atonement. 
It means it's necessary for the avoda that it gets in. Okay. So the Gemara now asks a follow-up question. It says, she know who the light. Okay. We're not supposed to sleep in the big tikkuna. But we said, but you're allowed to eat. Now that didn't prove anything to me because eating was tzorah avoda. I'm not allowed to sleep in it. But it sounds like I'm allowed to walk around, take a stroll around, you know. It says, Bedinhu, Deluchi Namilai. The truth is that you're not supposed to take a walk in the clothing as well. So why do you say you're not supposed to sleep? Say, don't walk. That's, even if you can't walk in it, then, right? If you can't take a walk in it, take a stroll, then for sure you can't sleep. The Gemara says, the safe is Trichlein. It was necessary to say sleep because, because, it's coming to teach me something. Because it says, Paste in a makaplam and nechatakas or same. They weren't supposed to sleep in it. So what did they do? They took it off, they folded it, and they put it under their head. It sounds like as a pillow. So that's a chiddush. So really, they're not even allowed to walk in it. But they wanted to tell me a chiddush that they're allowed to use it as a pillow. That's why they said you're not allowed to sleep in it. Because they wanted to follow up with that, saying, but you can't put it under your head. So now the, yeah. Very good. Very good. I'm not sleep wearing it, but you're allowed to sleep with it under your head. The Gemara asks now, the two dots over here are confusing. You have the two dots the other colon. You don't have any colon there? No. Oh, okay. My, in my Gemara, I have two colons there. I just have a quick group around. No, I have on the second line, I have a colon right before Pashtun, and then I have um, another colon, three lines down. I, I thought that that's a mistake. Okay, so does the printer of the new Gemara. <laughs> so they would fold, they would remove the clothing before they went to bed. They would fold them and they would put it under their head. Shamat me now, from this we see, big they couldn't understand that you're allowed to have personal benefit because you could use it as a pillow. Don't say that it was really used as a pillow. It meant that it was about to be on the side of their bed, fold, fold it and put it next to the head. Yeah. But what we're saying is, is that we don't have a concern that he might roll over in the middle of his sleep and roll over on them. Now, Rashi and Taisvis are telling me that there's an issue here that you have to have a clean body, just like you have with tefillin, a uh, clean body. You can't uh, pass gas while you're wearing tefillin. So too, when you're wearing the big bekuna, you hear that? All day, they would wear the big bekuna. They have to have a clean body. Omar of Meshar, she is shamat mina, tefillin menatzad shapitami. We're learning from this, that you're allowed, to have, you're allowed to have the tefillin on the side of your bed while you're sleeping, and you don't have a concern that you might roll over on them. You're allowed to have to, I'm allowed to have clothing that I have to be careful with on the side of my bed next to my pillow, and I'm, and I'm not concerned. So tefillin, would, which has the same concern, should also be permissible. Tefillin, we're comparing the tefillin to the clothing. You can put it on the side of your bed. It's a different Kedusha. All right. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Yes, he's asking that. What are you saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so assume, assume that you that um, the physical body is not as careful. Right? So now, yes, he's saying that um, it's a different condition here. So maybe the comparison. Even though it's a different condition, I think the issue is the same. And so if 
that connection between falling asleep and having it on the side, uh, do we have a concern that you're going to roll over and end up being uh, laying on top of them? That's the same issue when we say that it's not a problem. The issue is being compared. It also makes sense to give this terence that it's not really under the head, that it's just on the side, the connected Rashayim, that it's on the side of the head. Because if you would say that it's under the head literally, then we have another problem. There's a problem with Kalayim, you're not allowed to lay on Kalayim. Nowadays, we don't even think about it. You get in the car, you sit down. You know, but years ago, we were careful not to sit in the, in the train because the seats uh, were, were shot. Yeah, they would have their own coach, you know, made with their own seats. And they shouldn't, uh, they shouldn't, and to put a cloth over it doesn't help. And you're going to say, bring your own, uh, because could be a hair is going to come out and rub on you and it's going to keep you warm. So we'll see. Um, far fetched. <laughs> So the Hika Avnate, let's look at this. You have the Avnate. The Avnate is the belt. And the belt was made out of shotness. Obviously, it can't be that you're putting your head on it. It must be that it's on the side, or else you're having benefits from Kalayim. So that's a good terence. All of this was to tell me that you have no proof that you're allowed to have benefit from it because it's on the side of the head. And I'll prove it to you that it's on the side of the head and I have to adjust what the price of Mishnah says because otherwise you have a Kalayim Mishnah. Umar says, Honey, Chalamandam Rav Nei Tishel Kayin Gadol. Adjust the words over here. Um, what do you want it to say? Zehu Av Nei Tishel Kayin Hadith B'Shayim Eishashana. If we say that the avnate of the Kayin Gadol on Yom Kippur, the gartel of the Kayin Gadol on Yom Kippur, which was the linen, is the linen. Yeah. No, the Kayin Gadol had special white clothing for Yom Kippur. So the belt was 100% white linen. The question is, all the other Kayinim, what was their belt made out of on a regular day? So if you say that it's, that it's shotness, No, if you say that it's not shotness, so then no, the one on your the one on your kipper was white. So if that's the same as the the cayenne head gets a regular belt. Oh, that's what we're saying. So so then there's no problem of shotness. But if you say that the Kayin had it actually had shotness in his belt. Then Mayakalamaima, then what are you gonna say? There's um you have a clear proof that you can't put your head on it. It's asking the question backwards because that's actually what we're looking for. We're looking for the proof that um that there is shotness there, and then the answer that he wasn't putting his head directly on it is a hundred percent an answer. Maybe you can say like this. Maybe it's not 100%. Because you're not allowed to wear Kalayim, but you're allowed to lay on Kalayim. Let's say that that's the pshat. The problem is, we have a b'risa that says that that's not true. It says, no, not sitting and laying. Sitting and laying versus wearing. It says that you're not allowed to put it on you. Don't jump to conclusions yet. No. But you're allowed to put it under you. Mm-hmm. But the sages said that there's a concern that maybe some of the strands might end up going over you. So this is probably, um, let's say, like a carpet or something that has, you know, like tassel. Mm-hmm. Uh, thing. They may end up going over, even though you put something mm-hmm. over. Uh, a, a mattress, um, Blanket, possible that some part of it will end up on top of you, depending on how you sleep. <laughs> what is it? 
dog hair. Dog hair is a chakra. The chitema, the mafsik, bit lay, midi, baini, baini. Maybe you'll put something in between. And then it's going to protect it. In the name of the holy congregation of Yerushalayim, they said, Even if it's 10 mats, one on top of another, and the bottom one has Kalayim, it's still a problem. Um, the <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Even. Yeah. Yeah, I think what it means is I think what it means is is that um, if we're going to allow any sort of heta then you'll end up doing it in a way that the heta is not really valid. Yeah. Yeah, there's other gazeras like this that we're not really concerned about this specific one happening when there's 10 mats. But there is a concern that if we allow you to use interruptions, it may not really be a good interruption. So therefore we say don't use any uh, any separations from chandas. Ella Lav Shmamina, whatever the case is, we see from this that Kenegid Rashayim. Obviously, the clothing needed to be on the side of the head, but not directly under the head. Otherwise, it would be an issue. Okay. Ravashi, Yama Ravashi says, not necessarily. Really, the clothing could be under the head. I is having benefits from Kalayim. So it's big, big, kuna kashen hen. The big Bikuna were so um, stiff that if it was used as a as a mat, there was no benefit. If it was clothing, then it covered you over and it warmed you. But just as a mat, it was not considered any benefit. This uh, felt, hard felt, Namta's felt, Gamda's hard, the Narish of a place, Narish. Sharia is permissible. They would um, they would make this a, a very hard felt that wasn't considered uh, uh, something that was um, that would give warmth to the body like, like clothing because it wouldn't like fold over the body. So if that would be as a mat or as a pillow, that wouldn't be an issue. Okay. This comes out. Uh, kalayim, the issue of Kalayim is to get warmth to the body, not to just raise the head. Yeah, it's not like it's Asr Bahana. It's Asr to have clothing Hana from Kalayim. I can sell, right? I can sell Kalayim to a non-Jew and use the money. But Asr Bahana, I can use it to, can I stand on Kalayim? If it's in the carpet? It's not yet. I think so. I can't, probably can't lay on it. Was there ever an issue of walking into these old, uh, you know, places, hotels? That have, it's not, anyway, it's not also like that. It's only also to have the, the warmth around the body. No, it's not I remember in uh, school, they, they made an announcement. I was in fifth grade, they came in. They said, one should know that we've just discovered that in the baseball mitts, there's, in the, in the padding in the baseball mitts, the shot. You have to get your baseball mitt check for shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, you know how they check it. They pull out a few strands and they put a little um, chemical on it to see what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Tashima.
Come and listen. Big day kuna yech bem le Medina aser. We make the stain b'shas avedim bem shleiv shleiv b'shas avedim mutter. Nesh big day kuna net le hanes bem shmamina. You're not supposed to wear it outside the base of English. Big day kuna. But in the base of English itself, you're allowed to wear it, even if it's not the shas avedim. Obviously, it's a great uh, background. <laughs> so, um, in the basic English itself, you're allowed to wear, you're allowed to wear the big big corner and to walk around and to do everything, even if you're not doing that later. Okay, the Gemara says, Medina Light. You're not allowed to walk around uh, everywhere else. You're not allowed to walk around other places. Well, Tanya, but we have a brisa. This is a very interesting story here. This is a, a brisa from Megillus Tainus. Megillus Tainus was a book that during the Beis Hamikdash they had a lot of um, uh, days that they celebrated either as a fast day or as a holiday. And all of those days were celebrated because of events that occurred in the time of the Mesa Mikdash. They had this trouble and they were saved from it. So at the time of the trouble, they fasted it. And they saved, it was a holiday. They did not let it be eulogies or stay path. Then after the Mesa Mikdash was destroyed, the Butla, Gilles Tainas, except for Kanaka, that's like the remaining uh, holiday of Gilles Tainas. There's many. Yeah. There's many different holidays. You can get a Megillus Tainus, by the way. It's, um, it has commentaries on it. But Tanya was taught in a brisa. On the 25th day of Tavis, that's the day of hard reason. Leila Misfit, you're not allowed to make a fast on that. You're not allowed to make a eulogy on that day. Why? This was the day that the Kutim, the Samaritans, they requested from Alexander that they should be allowed to destroy the base of Mikdash. And he gave them permission. He said, yeah, you can go destroy the base of Mikdash. They came to Shimon HaTzadik, who was the Kohen Gadol at that time. They said, what should we do? What did he do? He put on his Kohen Gadol clothing. Vinisatif Big Dikuna put it on his he wore it and then he crowned himself with it. And from the Khashiv people of the, of the Jewish people together with him, they took torches. And all night they were walking. These the, I guess Alexander's people walking the one way and he was walking with his people the other way, the uh, um, opposite, you know, until they met. At Sha'Allah Mudashacha until dawn. Kimon Shalom Mudashacha. Amalahem Mialalu. When the dawn arose, Alexander asked his people, Who are they? Amalai, he says, Yehudim, Shemarduba. Those are the Jewish people that rebelled against you. Kimon Shagiel Antipatras, when they came to Antipatras, the city. Zarchachama, the sun shone a pagozebaze, and they met each other. Kivan Shirala Shimon Atzadik, when he sees Shimon Atzadik, this is Alexander in Macedonia. Yarad bin Rakavte Vishtach Valafana, he got off his wagon and he bowed down. Amalai Melach Gadol Kamaischa Yishtach Valiyud, he such a great king, is bowing to this Jew. Amalahem, he said, the Musti Yaknish Lazem and Atzachas Lafana Bes Mohamti, an image. Of uh, this person is before me, Natsechas Lafonai, is victorious before me at my house of war. Yeah. yeah, they have another interesting source in conventional history. I think they said, um, How does uh, Alexander claim that a man with a, with a beard? told him that he should build the city of Alexandria. And conventional history has it that it 
was Homer. That's what they think. Homer was a was a writer. Right? In Greece. He always read, because apparently Alexander always went to sleep. He had the books of Homer next to him. So they thought it was Homer. Anyway, I don't think it's Homer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what is that? Oh, it became a Jewish name from, the, uh, from this. Yeah, it, no, this is not in here. Yeah. That part of it is not in this, it's not mentioned here. Yeah, that could be in Miguel's Tainus. Over here, they don't quote that. So they had a elegant accent? So, so far, Amalehem, we're in the middle of the story, wait. Amalehem, Lama Basim, he said, why did you come? And I was just commenting that the man with the white beard that conventional history interprets as one person could have been Shimon Okay. Why did you come? Amaro, Efshir Bayesh and Mespalam Bayalecha, Val Machuskosh, Leti Horeb, Ituchai, the Kachav Lak Rivai. Is it possible that the house that prays for you and for your kingdom, that it doesn't get destroyed, should the, the idolaters fool you into destroying it? You know, this is what, this is your support. Like it says by Sukkah, it says, uh, if the nations of the world would know, the sacrifices that we're bringing to, to support them, they would never have destroyed the basement. So this is where this is we we pray for you. You're gonna come and destroy it. Amalehem Mialalo. He says, Who is um who's saying to do this? Amalek Kutum Alalo, Shemdum Fanach, it's these Kutum standing right over there. They're trying to destroy the base of Middash. Amalem are Surm Biadecha. you can go do with them what you want. Miyad Nakru Bikvayam. Tortures. Isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. No, that could be. Yeah, I thought the Kutum were already with Alexander because they were already there. Um, and then they went to Nasnulahem. In the pictures, <laughs> and Ramesh is suggesting that maybe it says halalo halchem etzadzeh, mean that the kutim are walking alongside the Jewish people, and they're going to uh, Alexander. But I don't know if that's the shot. It could be that that Alexander and the kutim are walking one way, and the Jewish people are walking the other way. I'm not sure how to too many pronouns in there. So they've made a uh, made holes in their ankles. The talo and they attach them to the tails of their horses. And they drag them over the thorns and what are barkanim? Oh, the branches. Actually, so they reached that grisim. This is the kutim. The Jewish, Jewish people did this to the kutim. Kim grisim, when they reached that grisim, they plowed it over and they planted karshinim. What is karshinim? Leeks. Um, as they wanted to do to the base of English. Do you see? That was the yamta. How is that one of those five points of Should they just down? Why did Eric just down on the base of yeah, I don't have any comment. I don't have any comment. Is there any comment on how they were allowed to do that? That's not a Jewish. Uh, that's against the Constitution. They weren't constrained to the five best when they went to war, right? Right. But it never says anywhere. Okay, what comes out here is um, that there's a question, a, a halakha question is how is Shimon and Tzadik allowed to go outside with the clothing of the king? Yeah, he said you weren't allowed to walk outside. It was a, it was a, um, it's not a Jewish thing. It's not a Jewish Kain Gadol clothing. No, it wasn't the real Kain Gadol clothing. Oh, 
The next answer, It was a time to do for God, where you had to uh, violate the Torah because this was a, a dangerous, this was a, you know, the, the time warranted that you should break the law. Okay. Chazan HaKnesses Neitel Sefer Torah. We said that the Shamash took the Sefer Torah and he handed it to the Gabai. The Gabai gave it to the Skanka and Gadol and the Skanka and Gadol gave it to the Kain Gadol. Shmami Na, we see from this, Kolkan covered the Talmud the Makamara that you're allowed to give uh, honor to the student in front of the, the teacher, in front of the master. Now, in front of the master, there should really be no honor. Everyone should be equal. Um, it's all honor for the Kain Gadol, that the Kain Gadol is higher than all of those other levels of honor. So it's not that you're actually giving honor to them independently. It's a way of showing that the Kain Gadol is higher than all of them. Uh-huh. All equally under the Kain Gadol. Uh-huh. Interesting. The Kain Gadol I made, the Kain Gadol was standing. That means that before that he was sitting. He would stand up when he to receive the Torah. Banan Tanan, but we learned that you're not allowed to sit in the Azara. The only one that's allowed to sit in the Azara is the Kain, is the uh, king of from the house of David. Yeah, there's a question why. Why is a king from the house of David allowed to sit in the Azara? Well, what's the basis for not sitting in the Azara? That was this has to do with your with your Yeravam yeah. didn't want that people will say that he's not a real king. He's not from Israel, not from the stomach. But um, it could be that the whole point of this was just to show honor to David. Right. right, that was the idea. I'm sorry? His descendant, right, yeah, his, his lineage, his uh, in future. Shinemar vayavay emelech David vayeshev lefnei Hashem that David came and he sat before Hashem. And from that we learn that you're allowed, that the, the Malchi based David is allowed to sit. The Gemara well, answers, Kedam Rav Chiz, the Bezos Nashir. Where does it say that David sat before Hashem? Very good. So, um, it's when Nassim and Nabi tells him that you're not going to be able to build a base of Mikdash. Um, but your son will build the base of English. So there it says that he sat in front of Hashem. Um, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, he's asking that you can't learn a lot of them now. Um, no, but we're learning from what happened. And if David was allowed to sit, that means that, uh, that they're allowed to sit. Yeah, I think what it means you can't learn from Nabi is you can't learn from a diak in the Pesukim, like oh. an extra word or something. Uh, maybe I could like, if you just say that Don, and then we're not all standing here, so that's a deal. No, but it's not a deal. A diak in the Pesukim is that there's an extra word. So, um, Rav Chizda says it, it wasn't in the Azara, it was in the Ezra's Nashim. He said this about something else. We'll say, Hachanami, Ezra's Nashim. It was in the Ezra's Nashim. So, where was the statement that Rav Chizda said? Aha, Mesre. On this question, somebody will take the word Mesre out. The Tanya was taught in the Braisa, Hechen Kairen Bai, where would they read by the Hakel? When everyone would gather, Hakel was after the Shemitah, right? The year after the Shemitah. So where would they, um, where would they gather? Where would they read it? Ba'azara, in the Azara, Rabbi Lazar ben Yaakov and Baharabayas. He says that it was on the Harabayas. That they read it in front of the road that was in front of the gate, of, the water gate. Amar Rav Chizda says that it was in Ezra Snashem. So we're gonna say, that the Torah reading on Yom Kippur was also in Ezra's Nashim, 
and that's why he was sitting, and then he, he, he stands when he gets the Torah. Vayivarech Ezra Sashem Alikim Agadol. Ezra blessed the great God. My Gadol. What does it mean, great? Amar Rav Yaisef Shagadol B'Shem HaMafayosh. He made him great by saying the 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 Shema Mafirish, which is either the pronouncing of the Yitzhi Havke or it's the um, 42 uh, letters. letters. Oh. Rav Gidl Amar, Rav Gidl says, Baruch Hashem Alekei Yisrael Minaylam Adailam, that the way that they said the bracha then was instead of Baruch Hashem Alekeinu Malach Ha'ilam, they said Baruch Hashem Alekei Yisrael Minaylam Ad-Ailam. They, they had a, uh, a longer um, expression of praise. Amalei Abayel or Abdimi. Abayel says to Abdimi, the Dilma Shkidla B'Shem Ha'mafayrash. Maybe it's the Shem Ha'mafayrash. Why is Rav Gidl saying that? Amalei Enem Shem Ha'mafayrash B'Gvulen. Now, Gvulen means the boundaries which is anything that's outside the Azara, including the Ezra's Nashim. <laughs> so he's saying that you can say the Shema Mepharish in the, uh, the Ezra's Nashim. He says, what are you talking about? That Ezra Sefer set this platform up. And he said the Shema Mepharish. And apparently that wasn't in the Azara itself. So the Gemara says, hey, Rasha, he said, that was... A, a time when it uh, was warranted that you're able to do it at that time. But officially, the rule is, is different. By Yitzhakwa, Hashem Lekim Mekal Gadol, they cried out to Hashem with a loud voice. My Amr, what did they say? This is by Ezra. Amar Rav, Itim Rav Yechen. Rav says, and some say Rav Yechen, says, Baya, bye, bye, Baya, Baya. Probably Baya, Baya. Right. Whoa, whoa. It's the double T. Double yeah, yeah. double U. Right? It's the whoa. The base is a, it's a, it's a double U. Right? Whoa, whoa. Hi, no. Hi, no. Hi. Hi, no. 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 Hi, in the, the the one that destroyed the first base and make this is still here. Hi, hi no hi the the, the Yitzhahara of Avaidazara that destroyed the first base and this, that burnt the Hechel, that killed all of the tzaddikim in it and caused the rest of the Jewish people to go into get exile, be exiled from the land, is still dancing in front of us. Because there still is the temptation to worship idols. It's still here. Kulum Yahav Ella why do we have a Yetzirah? So that we should overcome it and get reward. We don't want the Yetzirah and we don't want its reward. Right? I don't want, uh, I don't want you with the honey. I don't want it. Take the whole thing. So, they get a note that fell down from heaven. Doesn't it? True. Amar Rav Chanina, Shema Mina Chisam Mishal Hakadosh Baruch Hu Amos. Rav Chanina, early Amira. That's okay. When did I know it's called that? This is in the days of Anshik which is Ezra. So that's okay. I know it's not called that. Said Emes, and Rav Chanina says, Shema Mina Chisam Mishal Hakadosh Baruch Hu Amos. That was Hashem seal. That's the way Hashem responded. Responded with this not with this seal that says Hamas truth. Asiva betanisa tlasa yoyman tlasa leilasa. They sat in a fast for three days, three nights. Masru nale. They gave the yitzhara over into the hands of the anshik nesak leila. Nafak. They went out. Also kiguria the nur of beskatche kadashim. And it came a, a, a lion cub of fire. It, or like a lion cup of fire came out of the Kedosh HaKadoshim. Amalu Navali Yisrael, the prophet, tells the Jewish people, Rashi tells us the prophet here is Zechariah and Edom. 
I thought he was killed in the first place. This must have been, I don't know what's going on. So the Navi says, Hani Yitzhah Dabay the Skechavim. This is the Yitzhahara for idolatry. Shanemar, Vayemer Zaysar Shah. When Zachariah says it, he says, and this is the wicked one. Badi the Tafsule, they, while they were grabbing the Yitzhahara, Ishtamit Benisa Mimazye, here, cat while they're trying to grab him, here came out of his head. Baramakala, his voice uh, was raised, Razal Kalye, Arba Mea Parse, and it screamed 400 Parseis. Amro Hechi Navid, what should we do? Maybe uh, they're going to, he's crying like this, maybe they're going to have compassion on him. Amru Navi Shadu Biduda the Avra. You have to put him into a lead. Um, Hot. It's like radiation. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yes, he comments that it's like radiation. The and cover his mouth with lead. Oh, the avra. The avra mishav shav color because the lead will will uh, absorb the uh, the sound. The radiation. Shinema Vyemerze Sarasha, as it says, this is the wicked. Bayashlicha sal teha epa. Bayashlicha seven a fair saltia. That's a pasta. They put it into a pot, I guess, and they threw a lead stone over its mouth. Amru, the people said, Hayal Bay Sratanu, because this is a things are going well. Nibai Rachmi Yitzhida Vera. We should ask ask uh Compassion that Hashem should give us also the Yitzhahara for uh, for uh, sexuality. That's the Yitzhahara of, of Avera. That's the Boya Rachame. They asked Hashem, Imsi be Yadayo, and Hashem gave him the, uh, the Yitzhahara also. Amalahu, Chazu, I guess the Yitzhahara tells to them, it says, Watch, Ikatlisa le lahu, that's supposed to be lahu gabra. If you kill that fellow, to himself. Kali Alma, the world is going to be destroyed. Chavshu, so they captured him. Kalasa Yaime for three days. They weren't able to find even an egg um, in the whole Eretz Yisrael, day old egg. Uh, even the eggs that are not fertilized, they weren't able to find. They weren't able to find anything. Amri, Hechinavid, they said, what should we do? Not to lay to kill him, Kali Alma, the world is going to be destroyed. Maybe let's ask heaven just for half. Heaven doesn't give half. <laughs> it's all or nothing. They blinded him and then they left him. And it helped that people are not tempted by their close relatives, by sisters or mothers. That's what... Uh, Okay, that's um, that's this that's this Gemara. Yeah, um, yes, it's brought up <laughs> the comment that apparently it's changing a little bit, but that could be because what's that thing that they do to the eyes? They, the, the laser surgery. <laughs> <laughs> they fix the Yitzhara. <laughs> Okay. What's it called? What's the what is it called? Lasik. Lasik. Yeah, the Yitzhara got the uh, Lasik. Right. Yeah, the commentaries over here explain that um, that the reason why we lost prophecy is based on losing the, the uh, the Yitzhahara for Abedazara. We don't understand the Abedazara. We don't know what that. But why were people worshiping these little um, uh, Lego people? You know what I'm saying? Like, like really? That's uh, <laughs> no one with any uh, intelligence would ever do anything like that. But apparently, 
apparently there was something spiritual that they knew about. Now, whatever that spirituality was, that was also coming to them as prophecy. When they lost, I wonder if you told me to be eternal, like what happened, nothing, nothing, yeah, right? Right. So the consequence was is that we lost, we lost the prophecy. We lost the spiritual sensitivity. It was a Yeah, it was a uh, <laughs> it was something going on that they were able to, to it was like it was like you know cheating on a test that you can you don't no, no. Just, you don't have to work hard but you still you're able to get the answers so but the sort was like without working hard you're able to get the results that's what that's what it was so um so yeah it was a cheap way of getting results so but whatever it was there was something spiritual then that they lost yeah so Ramesha says that um that Yes, yes, he says, sorry, that, uh, that after they killed the Yitzhara, the Rabbi Yitzhara went into, went into money, and the people desire money. And they say that Alter Rebbe commented that he doesn't know if it was worth it. Anyway. The Ma'arav Mas Nohachi. In Eretz Yisrael, they taught it like this. Rav Gidl Amr Gadl Shagadl B'Shem HaMafayrash. Rav Gidl says, this is nice, because God like, how do they make him great? Before Rav Gidl said, Baruch Hashem Alkei, so many of them. Rav Gidl says that they, they said the same Amma Fairesh. That's the, the Kohen Gadl said the same Amma Fairesh. Right over here. Right. Bakal Gadl. No, it's going on the Pasuk in, um, in Ezra that he said the same Amma Fairesh. Rav Masna, Mar, Rav Masna says that Hakela Gadl Gibavan Naira. That they said Hakela Gadl Gibavan Naira. The Rabbi Shua ben Levi. It supports the statement of Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Dam Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Lamanik Shmon Anchek Nesag Dela. Why the Anchek Nesag Dela? Called the men of the Great Assembly. Why are they called the men of the Great Assembly? I hear. Shas Dira Tali Eshlem because they brought back the crown to its original uh, glory. Also, Maisha, originally, Maisha says, The God, the great one, the strong one, the awesome one. Also, Yermia, Yermia, Navi came, Vamar well, Nachar Makarkar in Behicholai. What Makarkar is um, uh, chirping? The, the, the non Jews are chirping in the chamber, uh, are squawking in the chamber of, uh, of, uh, of the base of Migdash. Where's Hashem's awesomeness? Look what's happening. The Beis Midrash is destroyed, and you're saying that God is awesome? They stopped saying that. They stopped saying that. They said, Akela God Lagibar, but they didn't say that. Also, Daniel, then Daniel comes. Says, Look, the children are taken into slavery. Where's Hashem's strength? They stopped saying, I'm sorry. Also, you know, so then Anshik Nasa Gadela said, Adarabba, Vamro Adarabba, Zui Kvurasai, Zui Kvurasai, Shakavash is Yitzre, Shakavash, yes. I'm going to adjust this too. Ritsainai. Kavash is Yitzre, Kavash. Shanasan Arachapayan Lur Shamla, he's, he's uh, allowing. Um, he's being patient with the wicked people, giving them a chance to do tshuva. That's Hashem's great. That's Hashem's strength. We say, who's a strong person? Someone that controls his inclination. Yeah, that's what, that was the original statement. Where's Hashem's awesomeness? If, um, if look at what they're doing. Now we're saying, no, Hashem's strength is that he's allowing the, he's being patient with the wicked that they should do tshuva. And, and this is his awesomeness. 
Shall the Molly Marod shall a Kalish Baruch, Uma Achas, Yachal and Liska in Benumas. You know how Hashem is awesome? That the Jewish people still exist. <laughs> That's the awesomeness. That's the miracle. Okay, for Rabbanan Hechi Abdi Hachi, for Akri Takantad Takan Maisha, how could the Rabbanan, which is referring to Yermia and Daniel, how could they change the verse that Maisha instituted? Am Rabbalazar Mitakshi Yedim Akadish Baruch Shamitil, the Pikach like Tizuvai. They said, look. Hashem is truth, as we mentioned before. It's not appropriate to adjust anything. Uh, that's not true. That to, it's not appropriate to say the original if it's not true. Therefore, they adjusted it. It has to be 100% true. Okay. Yeah, I so, saw um, there's a comment from one of the interpreters and uh, the commentaries about the um, uh, Yitzhara for sexuality was taken away and we don't have the desire for the close re- for close family relatives, family members. Um, one of the commentaries says what they did was they instituted that they have to dress properly in the house. That institution is, is taking away like the, 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 um, the miracle of it. Thing. How did they do it? They instituted that there should be tzniyas in the house. And they were not I guess before, I don't know, maybe they weren't so careful and then they instituted it. Okay. The they read, the kind God reads Achrimais, and he also reads Achrimais, which is the portion that discusses Yom Kippur. That's what the kind God reads on Yom Kippur, right? They give him the Torah. And he reads this portion. And he also reads Ach Basar, which is in, in Parsi for a minnow, there's a problem. There's a contradiction. Medalgan minavi ve medalgan matari. You're not allowed to skip. You have to, if you're reading from the Torah, you have to read straight. If you're reading from the navi, you're allowed to skip, but not in the Torah itself. Well, that's part of the question. That's part of the question. We have going to have to continue because right now that's going to be an issue. Rosh is bringing up the what about master. Um, you see, when we finish off Torah, sometimes, oh, it's Rosh Chodesh, which is Arab, Rosh Chodesh, which is this, which is also this of Torah, so we'd say another two psukim here, there, you know, to finish off at the end. You're allowed to do that in the Navi, but you're not allowed to do anything like that in the Torah. Like Asha, the Gemara says, It depends how far away it is. You're allowed to do a short skip because you're going to roll it to a place while the there used to be a, um, a Tiyach of the Tzibura. There used to be someone that would translate every, ver- every uh, verse or section that was read. While he's translating, you could roll it a little bit and get to the next thing. Like, actually, we do on, on a fast day. We roll a little bit to get to the next portion. So, uh, I don't know. Why they stop translating? Aramaic. Maybe when people stopped understanding Aramaic, but I don't know when exactly they stopped. Naftali, do you know? When did the Turgamans, the Turgamans stop? Okay, I don't know. So we have an answer. The answer is, is that it was a small skip. There was a problem over here. You're telling me that you're allowed to skip in the Navi, you're not allowed to skip in the Torah, but in the Torah, you're allowed to skip if it's... It says, no. Even in the Navi, that concept, that if it's not a big enough, if it's not a large jump, and you're able to roll the Torah, you roll the scroll, while the, the uh, translation is being said, that would only be in the Navi. But not in the Torah. It says another you're allowed to skip. How much you're allowed to skip? If you can roll it while the while the translator is translating. Obviously in the Torah you're not allowed to skip at all. It depends. You're not allowed to skip to another topic. You only read one topic every every time you read the Torah. You don't skip to another. Bahatanya. And this Bahatanya is Binichusa. This you just read this group. The Dalgamatar Binyanach, you're allowed to skip in the Torah if it's the same topic. A Benavi, 
Shnein Yanim. In the Navi, you're allowed to skip the two topics. Kan Bekan, Bechlech Shal Yafsa, Kam Torgon. But both of them is only if it's short enough that the translator is still translating. You're not supposed to make the congregation wait. But you don't go from one book of Navi to another book of Navi. However, in the book of Treyasar, which is which is very short um, prophecies that they were all combined together into one book called Treyasar. So over there, you're allowed to medalgan. But actually, you dalg me safe as safe as the But you're not allowed to go backwards in the Navi. You go always forward. Okay. How are you allowed to read the mafter, the regular mafter, regular mafter, you read the same portion again, big deal. But let's say it's a holiday. You're actually, you're jumping to something else. Maybe the answer is, is that you take out another title. So what do you do if you don't have another Torah? If you take out another Torah, then you're not going to take, take another Torah and you read from there. Maybe the Kaddish in the middle means that you're stopping it. Maybe the Kaddish concludes the, the Torah reading. And what you're doing now is another Torah reading, but it's not in the same Torah reading. Yeah. Sometimes you have more than one, right? Yeah, what do you what about the three Torah days? There's only one Kaddish. That's a problem. Okay, we are, I have homework. I have to look that up. Okay. The guy will say for Torah. He rolls the say for Torah. Kolkach Lama, what it says over there is then he announces, he says, more than what I've read to you was written in here. Why does he have to say that? They should see lads on Sefer Torah, not so that people don't think that the Sefer Torah was missing. That he knows that he's reading it from inside. Okay, it's unclear why he has to stay in that way. You could say I, I read from here. No, problem is like this, that he is reading one part by heart. The problem is when they see him reading by heart, why is he reading by heart? Maybe the Sefer Torah is missing a, as a gap, as a, as a hole in it or something. So he's announcing that, no, the Sefer Torah is full. I'm just not rolling it because I don't want to bother everyone to roll it to, from Emmar to Parshas Pinchas. He reads it by heart. Why doesn't he roll it? You don't roll it in the, in, the, in the front of everyone because it's, uh, it's not honorable for everyone that it's not prepared. So bring out another Sefer Torah and read it. If you're going to bring out another one, they're going to think that the first one was possible. If you're going to bring out another one, you're going to have to say another bracha. We say a new bracha for every person that gets an aliyah. But in olden days, one person got the Aliyah. Or actually, they would say the bracha at the beginning, and then people, different people would read, but they didn't say a separate bracha. I'm not sure why we switched it. But um, so they would get everything. The, the last Aliyah would finish the bracha. So over here, if you take out another Sefer Torah, you're going to have to say another bracha. Michai Shin Lepagama, the Gemara goes back to the answer of Rav Huna. Bar Yehuda. Is there a concern of the gam that people are going to say the Sefer Torah is possible? So you bring out another one. that falls on Shabbos. Okay, you have three Sifri Torah. The Gemara says Sifri Pagama. If it's different people that are being called up to read, so that's not a problem. It's chad gaver betlasa sifri. If it betrays sifri, it could be But if it's one person that's reading from two sefer Torahs, then it looks like it's possible. Yeah. So we didn't answer the other question. The other question was, how can you read from a different topic? 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do today. No, so what we're saying is here we're dealing with the kain gadol. Kain gadol is one person, um, so he's not supposed to read from two different tiras because it looks like the first one's possible. So take out another sefer uh, Yeah, he's not supposed to because either because it looks like the first one's possible. Can take out. He can't roll it because it's not honorable. And um, another reason why they can't take out a second sefer is because he would have to say another brother. Yeah, we say Birch Sater in the morning. And unless we have an Aliyah, we don't say another Birch Sater, it should be coming on the book. But an Aliyah, that's a designated well, portion of the Torah. Um, yeah, sure. It's but, Right. But even though we said Birch Sater in the morning, we'll say another Birch Sater when we read. So that's a designated piece that we have like an obligation to read. Okay. We say eight brachas on the um, uh, the Kohen Gadol says eight brachas. What is this? Taner Abano was taught in a brisa la Torah. Kedarshem mavarchem esiknesses. That's the way what we say in Shul. What is say on Torah? We say the after bracha. Ashenosan lono Torah semes right. Ala avida valaida val mechilas seven ketikna. You say Ritzay and Maidim and Mechila Sa'avin. That's the way it's, uh, it was instituted. And what do we say? We say Mechol Avin Yisaino, right? Like we say in Yom Kippur. Ala Mikdash B'fni Atzmai. There's a bracha on the base of Mikdash. We said Abaycha B'Mikdash. Ala Kaim B'fni Atzmai. We said Abaycha B'Zari Shal Aaron. Val Yisrael B'fni Atzmai. For the Jewish people, there's a special bracha. Val Shara Tvila. And for the rest of the prayer. Tanur Abanar, Vashara Tvila. What is the rest of the prayer? Rina Tchina Bakasha. Song, supplication, request, Mufanacha, Al Amchi Yisrael Shitzichim Li Lahisha. They need to be saved. And you conclude with Barachat Hashem Shemir Tila, or according to what they said before, Barachat Hashem Aki Hashem and Ayman and Ayman Shemir Tila. Barachat Kach Kalachadach and maybe Sefer Tarim, 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 Everyone goes home and they get their own Sefer Torah. And they bring it to show to everyone. To show how beautiful it is. What are they doing? Are they opening it up now? I don't know if they're, what they're doing. They're just showing the Sefer Torah. Yeah, like, it's like a Simchas Torah. Araya King God limit nation Rashai. He said that you're the one that sees the kind of doing this service, the parvasar, when he's reading the Torah, cannot see him doing the parvasar, cannot see the parvasar being burnt. Not because he's not allowed to, but because it's just too far away. Shita, that's obvious. Rish Lakish says he not let it pass over a mitzvah, which means that I shouldn't be going away to, from watching the Kain Gadol read to go see that, or to, from seeing that to go see the Kain Gadol read. I'm sorry? Yeah. So you're not supposed to skip over it. So Kamar says, my mitzvah, but what mitzvah do you have over here? You're not the one that's reading, and you're not the one that's seeing. It says, the mitzvah is Bereva Mahadus that it's honor to Hashem when there's a big crowd. Mash Malan. Okay, let's see what I'm saying. Just a second.